How many of you guys like sports? You like football, basketball, you like, you like sports. Some of you guys don't really care, huh? For those of you that don't care, just, just, just listen for a little bit. Sometimes, sometimes in sports, whether it's football or basketball or whatever it is, sometimes the coach has to call a timeout to make some corrections, to make some adjustments, to encourage, to inspire, to critique a little bit. Today I want to be the coach, and I want to call a timeout in the middle of your life to give you some direction. Who of you know we need direction from time to time? Yeah. Who of you guys got a GPS? Yeah. Yeah. You can't always go by, go by that GPS, can you? Yeah. <laughs> turn right. If you guys go to Branson, I'll tell you to turn right 1,500 times and it's not even a street right there. <laughs> you turn right, you will be in a ditch. <laughs> Recalculating. No, you're wrong. Keep going. Well, listen, I want to give, God wants to give us some direction. Who needs a little direction from time to time? Yeah, and all the ladies said yes. Yeah. And all the men said yes. Yeah. We all need direction from time to time. Here's the direction. Sometimes in life, we experience various seemingly, somebody say seemingly. Seemingly, seemingly unending and unwanted events. As a result, we tend to use phrases like the following to describe how they make us feel. How many of you have said this? <coughs> when it rains, it pours. How many of you have said that or you've heard someone say that? Man, it seems like when it rains, it pours. How about this next one? <laughs> if it ain't one thing, it's another. Excuse the English, but you get the point, right? I don't think any of you guys are going through some bad stuff and you try to use proper, proper English. Look, boy, if, it's, if it isn't one thing, it's another. Now, if it ain't one thing, how, how would you get your English right when you're going through some mess? I don't know, not one person. You, you, you get it out the best way you can. Let me see if I got that verb in the right place. No, you ain't worried about no verb. and so, If it ain't one thing, yeah. If it ain't one thing, yeah. how about this next one? Sometimes it seems like I can't win for. Losing. How many of you have said that? Yeah. By the way, these aren't good things to say. No. Because death and life. Or the what? And they that love it shall what? No need for me to preach. Let me have a seat. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes it seems like I can't win for losing. How about this last one? If it wasn't for bad luck, I would have no luck at all. Who said that one before? Three people, huh? Well, that's good. For you three, don't say it no more. When it rains, it pours. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Sometimes it seems like I can't win for losing. And you know, we, when we say it, we're always shaking our head, aren't we? Lord Jesus, if it ain't one, if it ain't one thing, it's a... We, we, use, we use sign language and all... We use... You, you get the point, don't you? If it wasn't for bad luck... By the way, I don't believe in bad luck when it comes to Christians. I don't believe in luck, period. I, I believe in being blessed and highly favored of God. I, I don't do nothing out of luck. Now, now I don't want to sound religious or, or legalistic, but sometimes you say, good luck. Hey, good luck. Don't tell me good luck. Say, be blessed. Or say, pastor, do your thing. Now, if you say, if you say, if you say, if you say, good luck, pastor, I'm not going to rebuke you. I'm just going to act like you didn't say nothing. <laughs> no, really, I wouldn't do you like that. I understand your heart. Sometimes we can go overboard. Amen. But at the same time, we have to be careful what we say. Yeah. Go back to my first statement that I made. My first statement. Sometimes in life, we experience various seemingly unending and unwanted events. Who's been there? It seems like one thing after another, after another, after another happens. And as a result, we tend to use phrases like the following to describe how they make us 
feel. I'm not going to go over those things again. I want us to go down to my next statement. It's during those moments that we need to have faith and know. Somebody say no. No. K-N-O-W. It's during those moments that you need to have faith and know that God is going to help you to overcome every situation that you're going through. I, I didn't say that you need to hope and that you need to just, um, just, just wish for good vibes. I don't, I don't understand the good vibes. You ever heard somebody say, send good vibes my way? Or you say, I'm sending good vibes your way. Don't send me good vibes. Send me some prayer. Amen? Send me some encouragement. But it's during those moments that you need to have faith and know. I want us to really understand today what that word K-N-O-W really, really means. If you understand what the word know really means, it'll change your mindset. Amen. It's during those moments that we need to have faith. Somebody say faith. Faith. And know that God is going to help you to overcome every situation that you're going through. Turn to the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Most of us can quote this scripture. Romans 8, 28. Paul says, and we know, underline that word uh, know, if you want to write in your Bible or circle it or highlight it, we need to understand the word know. Not N-O. Who's been told N-O before? Yes. No. Your mama tell you no. No. Absolutely not. We're not talking about that. No. We're talking about no. And we know that all things. Somebody say all things. All things. Brittany. And we know that all things. Yes. All things. Even those things that we don't like or understand. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. This is not just for anybody. For them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Somebody say no. No. And we know. You've got to know it. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Here is my title. You've just got to know it. That if there's, there's, there's no other, there's nothing else to say other than you've just got to know it. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't understand it. I can't fully comprehend. God, I don't know what you're up to. But God, I just know in my knower that it's going to work out. Yeah. Somebody say deep down in my knower. Deep down in my knower. Do you know where your knower is? <laughs> where, where's your knower at? Because I don't know. Tell me where your knower is. <laughs> You've got to know in your heart that it's going to work out. You've got to know in your spirit that it's going to work out. Here's, here's one of the worst things we can do. Here's one of the worst things I do. Not you, but me. Sometimes I try to figure out how God is going to do it. And most of the time, God doesn't even come close to doing it the way that I think he's going to do it. Do you know why? Because God's ways are not my ways. God's thoughts are not my thoughts. The Bible says as high as the heaven is from the earth, so are his ways and mine and his thoughts. But listen, that doesn't mean that we can't understand. I heard Bill say something months ago. Bill said, just because we don't know God's ways doesn't mean that we can't understand God's ways. So we need to pray for direction. We need to pray for revelation. But at the same time, we may not be able to figure out how God's going to do it. Amen. Sometimes, and most of the time, God does it in a way that you didn't even think about. Amen. The, 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 most, the most unexpected way is the way God will do it. Why do you think God does that? Let me tell you why God does that. Because he's God. <laughs> Just simply because he's God. In fact, the matter is, it doesn't really matter how it gets done so long as it gets done. Yeah. Amen. Amen? It doesn't really matter how it gets done as long as it gets done. But here's something that you and I have to do. We, we just got to know. In the, middle, in the midst of what you're going through today, in the midst of what you might go through next week or next month or next year, you have to know, not hope, Hoping won't get you nowhere. You've got to know that God's going to work it out. If you've lost your job and you've been faithful. Now listen. Sometimes we can get ourselves in some mess. 
if you don't go to work like you're supposed to go to work, don't blame the devil for you getting fired. If you've got a job to go to, you need to go to work and be there on time and do your job right. Just going to work on time, don't get it. If you don't go to work, you get fired if you don't do your job right. Now, what that's got to do with what I'm preaching, I ain't got a clue. <laughs> but let's go back to my title. You just got to know it. Somebody say you just got to know it. When you're going through what you're going through, you've just got to know nothing else will do. You've just got to know that God is going to work it out for his glory and for your good. Turn to your neighbor and say, you've just got to know. Turn to your other neighbor and say, you've just got to know. You might not understand it. Come on, come on. Tell me, you might not understand it. But you've just got to know. It may not happen when you want it to happen, but you just got to know he's always on time because he's an all-time God. Oh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I got happy right there, y'all. You just got to know it. Listen, I want to define the word no, K-N-O-W. I want to define this word no. Here's the first definition. To perceive or understand as fact or truth. To apprehend clearly and with certainty. To perceive or understand, in other words, that's what the word no is. I've got to understand that it's a fact. It is the absolute truth that God is going to work it out on my behalf. It is a fact. Somebody say it's a fact. It's a fact. Hey, if God says it, it's a fact, right? Yeah. Now, if I say it, I may mess up, right? But God doesn't mess up. If God says it, it's a fact, it will come to pass. Here's a second definition of the word uh, no. To have established or fixed in the mind. That's where it starts, right there in the mind. To have established or or fixed in the mind or memory. To have established. Have you ever heard I've got my mind made up. Uh, there's a soul, I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. I'm going to see my Jesus someday. Anybody else know this song? It, it's sort of a, if, if, if Roxy, listen. Listen, if, 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 if Roxy don't know it, I must have made it up. <laughs> no, really, it's, it's sort of like a, it's got like a little Jamaican twist to it. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I've got to see my Jesus someday. Donnie McCurkman, who said that? You don't know it? You just know who to say it. Yeah, he know it. He just don't want to say it right now. Listen. You've got to have it made up in your mind. It's got to be fixed in your mind. How many of you guys, your parents told you no about something and they didn't change their mind? Well, a lot of y'all's parents changed their minds, didn't they? How many, of you, how many of you tell your kids no and you stick to no? How many of your kids didn't like that? Listen, I was in junior high school. Spiral Bulldogs are going to play, I think, for the semifinals in Venita or somewhere. And my brother was going to drive to the game. I did something I had no business doing earlier that day. My mama said, you ain't going. Do y'all think she let me go? No. Listen, I cried and I begged. I said, I won't do it again. I'm sorry. Please let me go. Now, if you win, you keep going. If you lose, football season's over with. My brother was in route to come. Wasn't no cell phones back then. My brother was in route to come get me. Y'all hear that? Come get me. I got some nice cold juice in the refrigerator, so I'm outside just kind of messing around. And we lived in the country where I hear those tires hitting those rocks coming up the road. What did I tell you she told me? No. She told me no, but I'm thinking once he gets there, he can help her talk me into going to the game. Watch these spiral bulls. I got to be there to root them on the victory, right? 
If I don't go, they lose, right? <laughs> so my brother pulled up. As soon as he pulls up, I see him, and I get mad. <laughs> Throw my juice on the ground. What? Yeah. <laughs> that was the last cup of juice that I ever wasted <laughs> in my life. My brother comes, he tries to talk my mom and let me go, and guess what she said? No. I told you no, and I will not tell you no again. Her mind was fixed. Her mind was made up. Her mind was established, and when you're going through what you're going through, your mind must be made up, it must be established, it must be fixed to know that I know God has got this. I know God is going to work this thing out. Your ability to know will guide your emotions. When you don't know, your emotions are all over the place, and they will mess you up. They will tell you that God doesn't really care. They will tell you that you don't, God don't even know what's going on in your life. God doesn't care about what's going on in your life. When you have, I mean, when your ability to know, or your ability to know will guide your emotions. Keep your attitude in check. Build your faith. Keep your spirit in tune with God, and position you to overcome, even if things don't turn out the way you desire. Listen to this. Sometimes things don't turn out the way that we want them. That doesn't mean that you're not victorious still yet. Just because it didn't go the way you thought it would, and you may be disappointed. That's all right. But when you know, it'll help your emotions. Keep your attitudes in check. Build your faith. Keep your spirit in tune with God. And position you to become, uh, position you to overcome. Even if things don't turn out the way you desire. You guys remember the story in the book of Daniel where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down and worship the golden image? And there were some guys that went to the king and said, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, they did not bow down at the music. Those three Hebrew boys, Nebuchadnezzar had them call on them and said, I'm going to give you another chance. When the music goes and you bow down and you worship, otherwise you'll be thrown to the fiery furnace and it's going to be turned up. A whole lot hotter. What do you think these boys said? Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 and 18, the Bible says, the Hebrew boys said, If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able. Somebody say he's able. He's able. The God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But if he doesn't, your majesty, your majesty can be careful, or your majesty can be sure that we will never serve your gods or worship the golden statue you have set up. They said, you know what? We know God's going to deliver us, and even if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down and worship that golden image or worship your idol gods. They believed that God was going to move on their behalf, but they also said, but even if he doesn't, we're still going to trust God. There's a song that I'm not going to sing that everybody will know. It's called His Eye is on the Sparrow. Yeah. I want to read a verse, or uh, whatever you call it, of this song. What do you call that? Stanza. Stanza? Stand up? Okay. I want to read a stand up of this, this verse. <laughs> Stand up. I'm standing up. I, I heard you. Stanza. Stanza. Listen. His eyes on the spell. He said, why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven to come home? Or, 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 I'm putting words in there now. <laughs> Help me sing this song, y'all. Y'all ready? One, two, three. Oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Y'all say, <laughs> Y'all want to do it for real this time? Roxy need to help us? Why should I feel discouraged? 
Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend in his eye, oh, I'm sorry, constant friend <laughs> is his eye, <laughs> is he. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. <laughs> I promise you we're going to get through this. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow and I know. And I know. No! He watches me. Now give me a hand clap of praise like you do, Angela. Angela, I'm going to take your job, girl. Not. Not at all. I will not want your job at all. Hey, listen, the songwriter says, his eyes on the sparrow and I know. He didn't say, I think. He didn't say, I hope. He says, I know he watches over me. You've got to know. Somebody say, I've got to know. How can I get beyond feeling hopeless and hoping to knowing? Now listen, there's a difference between hoping and having hope. The difference between hoping something happens and having hope. Hope. Having hope means I've got faith. But hoping means I'm just, I hope I have good luck today. Hoping is totally different from believing. How can I get beyond feeling hopeless and hoping to knowing? How many of you guys want to stay in the place of hoping? Nobody. We want to get to the place of knowing. knowing. Number one, focus on God and his ability and not what you're going through. That's tough when you're going through, right? Somebody says it's easier said than done. Well, I'm, I'm just saying that. It's, it's, it's easier said than done. We need to focus on God. I'm not saying that, that, that you're not going to think about it because it's impossible for you not to think about what you're going through. But you can think about what you're going through and not focus on what you're going through. Amen. Focus on God and his ability, not what you're going through. A good example of that is King David, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37. As he was faced with, with fighting this uh, giant by the name of Goliath, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Number two. How can we get from feeling hopeless and hoping to knowing? By canceling out everything in your mind but victory. Amen. By canceling out everything in your mind but victory. How many of you guys have a whole bunch of stuff going through your mind that don't need to be in your mind when you're going through what you're going through? Amen. The devil's in your ear. You're, you're having all of the what ifs. How many of you guys let the what ifs get you down sometimes? Well, God, what if it doesn't happen? Well, God, what if I don't make it? Well, God, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? Well, what if you do? What if you do? What, what if you do? All kinds of things going through your mind. We need to cancel out some stuff. You know what that X means? Have you ever missed something in class and the teacher X'd it out? We've got a few teachers in here now. You, you, you put an X on it, you cancel that out. Some of you guys have canceled your cable service. Canceled your cell phone service. You can't, you've canceled some stuff. You got rid of it, right? Yeah. We need to cancel out everything in our mind but victory. Yeah. Second Corinthians 10.5, the Bible says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself, <clears throat> excuse me, against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. If someone was to tell me, Pastor, I never have negative thoughts. 
If someone was to say, preacher, I never have a negative thought enter my mind, I'd have to say I don't believe them. Unless your name is Jesus, everybody has negative thoughts at certain times. Regardless of the amount of faith that you have, we all have negative thoughts, but that doesn't mean we have to let the negative thoughts live and rule our minds, heart, and spirit, and decision-making. Number three, how do we get past feeling hopeless and hoping and then knowing? Number three, by faith, visualizing your expected outcome. Visualizing your expected outcome. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, the Bible says, For we walk by faith, that word walk is translated live, for we live by faith, not by sight. Sometimes what you see can mess you up. Sometimes what you see can cause you to turn your heart against God. Oh God, why did you do this to me? God, if you really love me, then why would all of this stuff be happening to me? We live by faith and not by sight. 1 Kings chapter 18, there was a drought that took place in Israel for three and a half years. Elijah had prayed, the heavens shut up. After that time period was, was um, ended, he prayed that God would send rain, and this is where we are right now. So before he prayed, it didn't rain for three and a half years. 1 Kings chapter 18. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. I've said this before. Whenever I think about this scripture, he says there's a sound of abundance of rain. That makes me think it's thundering somewhere. Yeah. That makes me think maybe it's rain in the distance. You ever, you ever heard it rain before it got to you? Yeah. You've heard it thundering from a distance. You heard it. You heard it. You, you just knew rain was coming. You could hear it. He said there's a sound of abundance of rain. But you're going to see a little bit later there was absolutely nothing there. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of, the, of Carmel, the mountain, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. He began to pray. Verse 43. And said unto his servant, or and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. Elijah said, there's a sound of the abundance of rain. So wouldn't you think it was cloudy outside? Wouldn't you think he possibly heard some thunder? But now this guy has gone and looked and he says, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And he came in to pass the seventh time and he said, behold, there riseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up and send Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stopped thee not. Last verse. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. Did you hear that? Yes. That the heaven was black. <coughs> and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. And there was a great rain. And Ahab rode. And he went to Jezreel. What was... Elijah doing? He was speaking by faith. Elijah pictured in his heart and in his mind and in his spirit rain coming. He prayed. He believed. He expected. That's what you and I need to do. We need to pray, believe, and we need to expect. Let's go back to our title as we get ready to, to close. You just got to believe. You've just got to believe. You've just got to believe. You've just got to know it. That there's, there's no other, there's nothing else that needs to be in our heart or in our spirit other than the fact that we've just got to know. God, I don't know how it's going to work out. God, I don't know how you're going to do it. But I just know that somehow you're going to do it. I want to ask everybody to close their eyes and bow their heads as we get ready to pray and dismiss. Give her altar call first, of course.